you gotta make the video. You've been putting it off for months. You just gotta throw yourself into it. Throw yourself into it. Oh, hello. My name is Dean, and welcome to Salty Sense, where we help you make sense of salt. And welcome to Salty Sense, where we boop, 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 activate your salty senses. And welcome to Salty Sense, where we make salt make sense. We can, uh, we'll figure out the intro later. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dean and I wanted to make these videos because as I'm sure I've told anybody who spent more than five minutes in a room with me, I love fish. I just think they're pretty neat. Specifically, saltwater reef fish. The thing is, not a lot of people have been exposed to saltwater tanks or know that they're something that you can actually keep in your home. It's like that one friend that you have that goes rock climbing. It looks pretty cool and you know that if you tried it, you'd probably enjoy it, but where do you even begin? Rock climbing is for some kind of strange man-mountain-goat hybrid. I'm just a normal guy. I can't do it. Bah! Can I? Well, dear viewer, I'm here to tell you that you don't need to be some kind of blend of multi-era Aquaman in order to keep a reef tank. You can, in fact, do it. You just need the right information. Having a reef tank is a lot like having a blend of a pet, a garden, and a piece of furniture all rolled into one. At the same time, though, it's not exactly like keeping any of these things, though. What are you talking about? Well, it's not often that you siphon and replace fluid from your dog. Your flowers don't generally eat each other when you plant two of the wrong kind too close together in your garden. <laughs> and your furniture doesn't normally die if you don't pay it enough attention. Oh, Jesus! Like a pet though, your fish will develop their own individual personalities, habits and interactions with you. Like a garden, your tank will change and grow over time, sometimes in unexpected ways. And like any good piece of furniture, it'll make your house look awesome. And make your friends think you're more interesting than you actually are. The problem with starting a reef tank is that there's just so much to know and so many places to learn it from. A lot of these places that you go to also assume that you have a whole bunch of background knowledge or you've done a whole bunch of reading beforehand. Well, dear viewer, the good news is that I will assume that you know nothing. This is water. Fish goes in water, not outside. Outside bad. To facilitate this journey of unbridled educational potential, we will use the most powerful educational tool known to man. As long as we have our... Microsoft Paint. Before we start talking about how to start a reef tank though, an important question to ask beforehand is should we? Reefing is a specialized hobby, and there's a constant stream of new people who jump in without knowing what to expect. Their fish end up dying, their tanks get overrun by green gunk, and they end up giving up. If you need proof of this, go to Craigslist or Gumtree or any kind of used classifieds listing, and you'll see a constant supply of used tanks and gear up for sale. I care too much about you to see that happen. I don't want you to waste a whole bunch of money. I don't want you to get overwhelmed and have all of your fish die. And I don't want you to get burned out and shut down your tank within two months of starting. That's why, to begin with, I want to go through six things. Six. Six things you should know before starting a reef tank. Number one, having a reef tank is not like having a goldfish or a freshwater tank. Maybe you've already got a tank and you've been going to your local fish store for a while now to buy goldfish or freshwater fish. Your tank's going okay and you're enjoying it. Each time you go in to buy a new container of flake food though, you can't help but notice the beautiful saltwater display tank they have set up on the other side of the store. It's full of all these amazing colors and corals and these crazy looking fish. If that's the case, then hi, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. We're gonna have a great time. There's a whole new world for you to discover. I mean it though when I say that it's a whole new world. Unfortunately, it isn't just a matter of adding some table salt to your fishbowl and getting rusty a new Nemo shaped roommate. The way that you set up the tank is different, the equipment that you use is different, the tests that you do are different, and even the water that you're beginning with should be different. I started out with freshwater tanks, but after keeping nothing but saltwater tanks for more than 15 years, there would be a lot of stuff I'd have to go back and relearn if I wanted to start a nice freshwater tank. Unfortunately, just a lot of the stuff doesn't transfer over. Imagine keeping a freshwater tank as being similar to keeping a garden. 
You set up your tank, do your landscaping, go to the store and find some specimens you like, and then you look after them by feeding and caring for them directly. Boom, done. Having a full-blown reef tank is a lot more like looking after a jungle than a garden, however. Instead of looking after individual plants, you're more looking after an overall ecosystem. And at the same time, you can't always be sure of exactly what's in there all the time. Instead of a garden, imagine a reef tank as being like having a bunch of dirt and rocks flown in from the Amazon. After a couple of days, you start to notice all these little bugs and critters zipping around and doing their thing. And was that some kind of mouse that just ran into that little nook? Where the heck did he come from? Maybe you'll see him again tomorrow if you watch the same spot. Maybe not. There are all these funny looking plant things when you look at the rocks, and I swear that vine thing wasn't there yesterday. But hot damn, now there's grass growing everywhere. But why is some of it red? The grass is starting to die back now, but there's all these new things growing all over the tank. And I wonder what laid all of these rows of eggs on the glass. I think it's time to start adding some trees to our landscape though. And you know what? Our landscape would look a lot better with some birds flying around those trees. And wouldn't it be cool if we could get a family of monkeys to live in those trees? And how about we add some bigger animals too to run around? Hell, maybe if you're feeling crazy, down the road we can even add a jaguar. The only difference is that in a reef tank you're using live rock and sand which have been seeded from natural reefs. Instead of the bugs, you have amphipods, bristleworms, microstars, and countless others that have hitchhiked into your tank. Instead of the mouse, you have crabs, mantis shrimp, and pistol shrimp. The tiny plants are small corals, sponges, and macroalgae. The vines are tube worms. The grass is hair algae and sheets of cyanobacteria. The trees are corals and anemones. The birds, schooling fish like chromus and antheas. The monkeys in the trees, clownfish. And the other animals, wrasses, tangs, blennies, gobies, dragonets, and others in more shapes, colours and varieties than you can imagine. And again, if you're feeling crazy, the jaguar would be a lionfish, trigger or something else suitably dramatic. Don't add a lionfish to your tank, it'll eat all of your birds and monkeys. Reef tanks are less about maintaining individual specimens, and more about maintaining an overall healthy ecosystem where countless things will live, hunt, reproduce and grow. All of the fish and corals that you've bought just happen to live in and benefit from this environment that you've created. It's your job as the reef keeper to maintain this balance so that your overall ecosystem continues to thrive. Pretty exciting, right? Number two, marine tanks are expensive. Like with pretty much everything you do in life, there are ways to do things that'll be more expensive and ways to do things that'll be less expensive. With reef keeping though, it's pretty much an unavoidable fact that no matter what you do, this hobby isn't going to come cheap. You have to be prepared for this. The reason that I'm telling you this isn't to try and scare anybody or convince you that it's out of your reach. It's just really important that you understand that you need to plan for this expense. Make a budget and then prepare to blow it up. Not only do you have to think about the upfront costs of starting your tank and filling it, you then have to also take into consideration the ongoing costs of keeping a natural reef running in your home. So how much is running a reef tank actually going to cost me? Well, sir, thankfully I have this handy dandy spreadsheet here that will explain everything. There's nothing there. I've deceived you and I'm sorry. How much your tank is gonna cost depends on a lot of factors, like how big the tank is, what type of animals you wanna keep in it, the quality and type of equipment you use, and also even where in the world you live. Goddamn Americans and you cheap everything. To start off with, you'll need things like the tank, stand, lights, heaters, pumps, and live rock. And then you've got ongoing costs like salt, food, supplements, and don't forget about electricity as well. To get an idea of how much these things cost in your area, it's a good idea before you start to go to an aquarium and have a look at how much things are. Walk around and get a sense of the prices and what you'll be looking at spending once you jump into this. Would you just tell me how much this thing will cost? I don't want to go shopping for lights and skimmers and sub-zero chillibrators. Okay, if you want an idea of cost, there are all-in-one tanks made in various sizes by companies like Red Sea. Have a look at them online and you can look at the different sizes and get an idea of how much things will cost. These all-in-one tanks are generally pretty good and they come as close to plug and play as you get in this hobby. But they don't allow for much customization and they tend to command a bit of a premium price for their ease of use. One final very important point about cost I'd like to make is that while there are legitimate ways that you can save money in this hobby, maybe something we could talk about in a future video. It has been my experience in this hobby that when you try to cut corners, you end up paying to do things the cheap way, having things go wrong, and then paying a second time to do it the proper way. The absolute best advice I can give you regarding cost is to do your research, do it right the first time, and pay for it once. 
Find out what has worked for large numbers of people in the past and then buy good quality equipment based on their experiences. You don't have to go crazy and buy everything top of the line. Cause all my box is gold and my gravel size and Gucci. You be buying fish flakes, I be buying mine blue cheese. But make sure that it's a well-known, reputable brand that you know will accomplish what you need it to do long term. Okay, I was planning on doing all of this in one video, but it's getting a bit long and I don't want to make a 40 minute monster that nobody's going to sit through. So I think it'd be a lot better if I chop this up into two, maybe three parts that are a lot more digestible. So if you've enjoyed this video or feel like it's helped you, leave a like or a comment down below and I will hopefully see you in the next one.